Hi, it's Richard from Original Outdoors, and this is our review of the Olight M2R Pro Warrior torch thing. That. There's a lot of internet out there, and a lot of it seems to be filled with reviews of Olight torches. That said, I want to say at the very beginning of the video, we are not running an affiliate program. If you go and buy an Olight torch, it makes no difference to me whatsoever. And if you're looking for a torch for general outdoor use, so for an expedition, backpacking, hiking, that kind of thing, I'm going to say from the outset, I don't think this is the best torch for that application. I think that if you're performing a role in the outdoors and you need a stupidly powerful, reliable, rechargeable hand lamp, then you should carry on watching. But if you want something for just use in the outdoors, then go and look at something like an LED rechargeable head torch. That would be a much more useful and versatile torch for, well, for most outdoor applications. But if you're interested in things around everyday carry and search and rescue and tactical and law enforcement and security applications, then yeah, we're going to discuss some of those things in this video. But first, we need a montage of pretty pictures with stats thrown up on top of them as graphics. So let's go and do that now. So that's everything that you'll find on the Olight website and on the stats and specifications. So out here in the real world, starting at the business end of the torch, at the bit that the light comes out of, you have this, you have this ring, which you can actually unscrew, which is a crenellated, quite aggressive ring there that I think is hard enough and sharp enough to actually break glass. You could use this as a rescue tool or to uh, break through the side window of a vehicle. I haven't tried it yet. I did think about doing it to the truck, but uh, decided it was uh, not worth it for the review. Then moving back from there, you've got this machined housing here, multi-sided ring that makes it easy to identify where this button is, this side button is 
in the dark, so you can feel that. I'm going to come back around to that in a moment. Moving further down the torch, you have this removable clip, and it has this weird S-shaped thing that means you can hook it like that, or you can put it in like that. And then the tail cap here, which is where everything else unscrews from, and O-lights, dual polarity, 5,000 milliamp battery, which is not quite a 18650 battery. It's their own sizing and their own size. So you will need to buy another battery from Olight if you need a replacement or a second battery. And then you have the lanyard here and the tail cap switch there. Now this can be placed onto a surface and it will sit there like that. And it, if you place it on a flat surface, the torch won't activate. So that's quite a good piece there. It is magnetic and I'm gonna come back around to that because that's one of the things I hate about torches like this. It's a nice little package. It weighs about 200 grams or just under. And yeah, I would feel quite confident having that on the front of a chess rig of some kind or on a rucksack shoulder strap or something like that and having it out in the elements. It's waterproof down to about two meters. It's drop resistant. So I can drop it from about that height onto a hard surface and it should be okay. And it's rechargeable and it's bright and it's powerful. And so far, those are things you can find on lots of other torches from lots of, lots of other brands as well. Moving on to the specifics of this torch. Well, you've got this side switch here, which also has a little LED there that glows green when it's at nearly full capacity and then goes down through an orange and a red mode as well which tells you well certain percentages these percentages here and that's what you can look at from the side of the torch and get an understanding of how much charge there is left in the battery that button there is also your lockout switch so if you press and hold it it goes to the moonlight mode and that goes off and now it just glows red every time you hit it and it won't activate. And if you hit the tail cap switch, it won't activate. I'm showing you that before the other functions because, well, that lockout switch is bloody important. I'm going to come to that later. Moonlight mode is the first of the several modes you can go through with this torch. And if you press it once, you get the one lumen moonlight mode. If you press it again quickly, you come to the full power mode. But if you Press onto moonlight mode and press and hold. It'll work up through, gradually through the different modes. So that means you can quickly get to the lighting setting that's right for the task that you're doing. Over here on the tail cap, well, it just jumps straight to mental mode and goes straight to stupidly powerfully bright. So you've got a powerful light that jumps straight on there and a progressive series of lights from the side button and a button that locks it out. You've also got this mode, the defense strobe, which that's of limited use. Uh, it's not something that's ever gonna be used in my work, but if you're using this torch where you may be pointing it and something it's attached to at humans, then it might be useful for you in that. I'm not gonna comment any further on that because that's not what I do with my work. But if you need a defense strobe mode, then it's there. So epilepsy inducing Japanese children's cartoon level to one side, you've got those other modes which are useful for different applications. So you have the very low level one lumen moonlight mode. That's what I would use for things like map reading and just illuminating one small section of the map without creating a big white light that's gonna bounce off the white paper of the map back at my eyes and kill any residual night vision I may have built up. So it's perfect for that or for looking for items in admin pouches or rucksacks or chest rigs or in vehicles or something like a that. Slightly brighter light like that. That's perfect for tracking, for illuminating the various compressions and divots that you get in a footprint or something like that, and shining around the edge in daylight even. It's quite good for those that kind of use without, again, presenting too much of a light to the surface that's gonna bounce back and kill any residual night vision you might have or even leave you with some bright white splotches that you'll be blinking away for the next half hour and then moving up from that 
slightly brighter light. That's good for looking for items in the immediate vicinity. And a brighter light again, then moving out to maybe 10 to 20 meters away from you. And then right up to, well, pretty much full power, which is good for searching and for going to within visual and recognizable range. And then turbo mode, which is, well, for making things over there very bright and very warm, because this thing really does put out some heat. That's the next thing you want to consider with this. Do up me chest pouch. If you leave it on turbo mode, well, I can already feel the heat here, and this whole section starts to warm up. I kind of understand why Olight and all of their promotional photos, everyone's wearing gloves, because this thing does get bloody hot. So much so that that's almost uncomfortable to leave my hand there and this metal casing is starting to warm up. I think that's there in the design because I think this whole thing's meant to act as a heatsink and it does say in the instructions not to activate turbo mode repeatedly in warmish conditions because this whole thing will start to overheat. If you accidentally activated it in your pocket it would melt through the fabric of your pocket. Ask me how I know that. As with all of these very powerful, bright LED torches, you have to be aware of where you're using them, where you're pointing them towards, and where you're storing them with the battery in it, because if it can be accidentally activated in a pocket or in the top of your rucksack or in the glove box of your car or something like that, there's a very real possibility it's gonna cause some damage or even start a fire. So you've gotta be aware of that lockout switch on the side that will prevent that from coming on. That's how I would have it, so I could put it in my rucksack or in the vehicle or something like that. So that's one thing that you need to be aware of with this, but I don't think is necessarily a drawback of the torch. Something that is a drawback is that. That is a magnetic tail cap. It's so that it jumps easily to the USB magnetic charging port. It's all absolutely fine. It's absolutely fine, right up until you want to use it alongside that. And this is my oh, reasonably expensive, but very reliable Rector base plate compass. I've used this for over 10 years. It's been halfway around the world with me. It's also, will steer towards this torch. And if I was to leave that in there with the torch stowed right next to it, the magnetism from this tail cap is going to affect the needle on that compass and it's going to prevent it from doing its job. It could even permanently or semi-permanently magnetize that needle so that it will no longer align properly with the magnetic field of the earth. It's just going to become a spinning thing in a clear plastic ring. So magnets on torches are one of my pet hates because I quite often have a compass with me and that relies on not being left near very strong magnetic fields. And most of my kit doesn't really put out that much of a magnetic field, but these charging caps from, well, so far what I've seen, Olight torches and a few other manufacturers, they really do irritate me. So if you're using this torch alongside a magnetic compass, you want to be careful about where you store it in relation to that compass. Out here on the front of my chest pack, that would be fine. In a different pocket in the rucksack, that would be fine. But in there right next to it, yeah, that's not something I'd want to do. So there's a lot to like with this and it is stupidly powerful and it's in a very small package and it could easily sit on a chest rig or a duty rig of some kind for lots of different users. But there are some drawbacks there. As I say, it will, well, you could start to cook small pieces of food with that end of it on its turbo mode and this end of it is going to ruin your compass. You've got those potential drawbacks but you've also got a lot of use there for it for lots of different users and with that in mind you've got to think about this as a tool and some tools are dangerous or at least can cause harm if you don't store them in the correct way. So my knives aren't loose in my pack, they're in sheaths, they're in leather sheaths or they're uh, folded up and stored correctly. It's the same with my axes, they have razor sharp cutting edges but when they're strapped to the side of my rucksack or in the vehicle they have leather masks over the blade to protect their blade but also prevent that blade from causing any damage. So this lockout business and this thing of turning the torch to a safe mode before you put it in your pack, 
Think about it like putting a knife away before you move on to do the next thing. You wouldn't leave the knife loose in the side of your, inside your rucksack and you wouldn't leave a torch like this loose so it could accidentally be activated inside your pack and melt through your waterproof or whatever it might be. So that's it, thank you for watching. As I said, we're not in the affiliate program for Olight, so if you go and buy an Olight torch, I don't get any kickback from that at all. There's no link below that will take you to my particular affiliate page or anything like that for Olight, but there is a link below to the Olight store in the UK, and that was who sent me this item to review. And they haven't paid me for this, they haven't given me any consideration for saying nice things about it, and as you've heard, not everything I've said has been nice. But if you wanna go and have a look at the rest of the Olight range, then there's a link there. And if you wanna see, well, what all these course things I keep referring to are about, then you can go and have a look at our website, originaloutdoors.co.uk, or go and have a look at our social media there. And if you like this video, like the video, subscribe to the channel, share it with somebody you think might find it useful. Thank you for watching. Whatever you're gonna do next with your lives, whether it's watch another one of our videos or go off and buy a torch or go and try and boil an egg with a torch you already have, I want to thank you for watching this video, for listening to me waffle on, and well, hopefully I'll see you again next time. Bye.